I always admired my friend Henry who said, never complain, never explain. But there have been a few things in the press this week which really are lead-ons to what I want to say. I was quoted Monday as saying that Unix was dull as a Russian truck. Now, I said the Russian truck was about a different product. I always said that Unix was very exciting, and it, was a, it, it and lamented that we might lose it as we made it more quality and more discipline. But it is the fun, and I never said the other thing. I no longer mention the Russian truck thing because it turned out I was right, and the way to make friends, particularly when a customer, is not to say, I told you so. Um, the um, thing I did say was the story about snake oil. Now, some of the remote in the woods newspaper said I said Unix was snake oil, and that's not what I said. I said that if you think things are transportable without the disciplines of a language, and without the disciplines of standards, then you believe in snake oil. Now, most people understand that one today, and you don't he hear that one. But the other thing came up this week was the comment in one of the magazines that said, OSF announcement on Tuesday was a non-event. If you get a half dozen of the very largest computer companies to come in one place, and say that they support OSF. That is non, not a non-event. That's one of the most significant things that happened in the history of computers. Computers, probably unlike any other industry, has been based on standards. We've had standards developed over many years and have been a key part of the computer industry. Having that group of standards committed to by the largest corporations is definitely one of the most significant events in the computer industry. Another thing that came out several times this week is that digital is getting religion and we've discovered Unix. Unix was written on deck computers. We've been selling computers for Unix for 22 years. I think it was started with our PDB-7, then our PDB-9, then our PDB-15, then our PDB-11, and then for the last 10, 12 years on VAX, some of the most important developments until OSF in the Unix area have been done on VAX. So Unix is not new for us. We have two families of computers, a RISC family and a VAX family. Both of them always play Unix. Maybe I should say almost, because I'm not sure of some of the details. But in general, they both play Unix. One of them plays only VMS. So Unix is not new to us. Unix is not a new idea we discovered. Now, some people th think, if we're faithful to the religion of Unix, why do we want VMS? Well, the answer is obvious. We offer a complete line of everything needed to do almost any job in computing. And there are many things we cannot do on Unix. There are many things you need VMS for. VMS offers multi-user computing, batch computing, real-time computing, transactional processing. It offers all the things you need for redundant computing for security. It offers all the levels of bandwidth you want from a simple workstation on up to a large mainframe designed for transactional processing. It offers everything from the least expensive machine to a very expensive machine that, that gives all of the reliability and security that you may want and that you want to pay for. This is why we offer VMS. VMS does it all. It does it today. And was designed to do networking. And you not only can go the full range of a computer, but you can use exactly the same software without recompiling all the way up. Now, our announcements today are about standards.
we've probably been leaders in the world of standards. We've definitely been one of the most serious and encouraging the, the, the latest round of standards. And the reason we want standards is to make sure that applications are transportable. Years ago, we, we the industry, said that if you wrote a software to a language, followed it carefully, applications were transportable. We sold many VAXs for people who wrote the software on VAX, carefully in a language, when it worked, transported it to IBM. It's a good interface. It had a lot of helps, good interactive computer, and it wrote software for IBM. Today, people write software for Unix on a VAX. They, when it works, they transport it over to a RISC machine. The question then is, why do we want standards? Well, the world of computing has gotten complicated. We share databases. We've gotten to the point now where almost every application is filled with human interaction. We do everything with networking. We send mail. We send documents. We send drawings. We do so many things. And not only do you have to follow a language, but now you have to follow every single one of those standards. And what we're announcing today is something we've been working toward for a long period of time, is that not only with our Unix software, but also with our VMS software, we not only follow all the languages, but we follow every single one of the standards with a goal that things will be transportable and that they'll all work on the same network. We're enthusiastic about this. We've always, or for many years, used VMS and Unix interchangeably on the same network. We would interchangeably use what they wanted and transfer data and transfer applications and transfer for results. Now we can say we can do this with anyone's applications that meet all these standards. And that's what we're announcing today, in addition to exciting new pieces of hardware, which um, I'd love to talk to you about, but I was only allowed a few minutes. Thank you. <laughs>
far as we're concerned, uh, as an open systems organization, sitting on the platform of XPG3 and hopefully XPG4 shortly, Mike Lambert will further endorse that process, a company that has committed its whole product line to the open systems process to ensure that the benefits to the end user, to the ISV, to the industry as a whole of open systems technology is provided across the product line. We're, of course, delighted as an organization set up to provide assistance in this area that the technology that we produced uh, is not only contained within the uh, Ultrix environment, but now can be seen also to be within the VMS environment as well. So we're very happy to be here to endorse this. And at the same time, we're absolutely delighted that digital is carrying forward in its commitment when OSF was created and further endorsing and supporting the technology we're producing. Well done, digital. And thanks very much. It's good to see many of you uh, again. Uh, for some of you, I think this is the third time I've seen you in uh, just a little over a week. So uh, good to see you. And again, uh, thank you for coming and welcome to our special guest. This is Digital's sixth major risk systems and software announcement since January of 1989. We're announcing new hardware and software in a few moments. Don Galbatz, who is our group engineering manager for our risk workstations and servers will give you the details. All of the activity today is about open computing and it is a real goal of users today. Last week in New York, the Open Software Foundation had a very powerful announcement. From the press reports that I've seen, I believe the writers and the analysts were a bit surprised at just how strong OSF has become and how committed the OSF members are. Digital joined IBM, Hewlett Packard, Hitachi, Bull, and other major vendors to reaffirm support for OSF. The uh, membership is now up to 210 members. And one important factor is those members represent 70% of all computer industry revenue. OSF has delivered the Motif standard, the distributed computing environment, and soon the distributed management environment. Last week, I announced that Digital will ship an OSF1 developer's kit during the first quarter of the next calendar year. In other words, within a short four months. Participation in OSF and adopting OSF technologies is a key part of Digital's commitment to open computing. Last Thursday, we took additional steps to enhance Digital's openness. We announced our plans to add all defined POSIX standards to VMS, and we're adding OSF standards and XOPEN standards to VMS. Again, we're providing open computing in our products across the board. The announcement today signals Digital's move into the fast-growing commercial Unix market. We've seen increasing interest in Unix from banking, retailing, telecommunications, and consumer services. The products that we're announcing today have been developed as general purpose systems and servers for the commercial market. Along with these new products, Digital Today will be announcing new pricing of our low-end risk Unix workstations. Digital is aggressively going after the uh, PC arena with these full RISC Unix workstation computers. This represents a tremendous opportunity for Digital Equipment Corporation. It's a very serious commitment on Digital's part of resources and people. You know, I've said this before to some of you, but these days every vendor continues to say that they're very serious about Unix. And I'm sure you hear it at almost every announcement and from every industry executive that you interview. And I'm afraid it's becoming a catchphrase and almost drained of its meaning. And that's too bad, because Unix is perhaps the most important issue in computing today. And the degree to which vendors are serious can determine if that vendor will succeed in the 1990s. With digital, 
we're proving it with our actions, and I'd like to just go over several examples. Fifteen distinct and compatible risk Unix platforms announced in 21 months. More than 1,500 third-party applications available today, and it's still growing by more than 100 a month. An integrated environment, network application support, NAS, that treats Unix users as full participants and supports not only our version of Unix, but others as well. No other vendor can do this. The fastest desktop Unix graphics machine in the world. It's the DeckStation 5000, and we continue to increase our manufacturing plan for the increasing demand. And it's a nice problem to have. Seven Unix resource centers up and operating in the United States and around the world. We've trained more than 6,000 sales representatives and 1,000 sales support people, technical sales support people, in just the last 12 months. We've sent thousands of Unix risk workstations out to our field office to support customers. And still, we consider this to be the beginning. Today, we're already working on the next generation of risk systems based on the MIPS technology. And you'll be hearing about those in the next few months. Two and a half years ago, Ken Olson joined in the announcement of the Open Software Foundation. He stated clearly digital support for OSF and our commitment to its goals. Ken was convinced that OSF could help define for the industry a truly open computing environment. The vision of OSF is to provide an open computing environment. This includes Unix, however, the OSF effort also goes well beyond to deliver a range of technologies that provides computer users with the real benefits of open computing. Those benefits are investment protection, lower costs through application portability, system and software interoperability, and scalability. That's the vision of OSF. And two and a half years ago, that was the target of the OSF members. Today, when we look at all that OSF has accomplished, we can see that achieving this vision is truly possible. OSF has acted as an accelerator of technology, moving new developments into the open systems market. Through the open vendor neutral request for technology process, OSF has delivered OSF Motif, the common graphical user interface. This is being adopted very quickly in the industry as a standard. Through the Distributed Computing Environment, RFD, OSF is now delivering a developer's toolkit that is the basis for a solid distributed applications environment. And through the recent Distributed Management Environment, RFP, OSF will soon deliver unified systems management. OSF Motif, DCE, DME, these are all technologies that go beyond the Unix kernel. And in the process, go a long way towards defining more complete open systems. Today is the most significant step yet. OSF is delivering OSF1 a technology for the hub of that open systems environment. OSF1 is an operating system that provides all the benefits of previous Unix implementations, but it also incorporates important technologies and features. And most important, OSF1 provides the basis for the Unix architecture of the 1990s that the industry needs today. These are crucial benefits of OSF1. And they are among the reasons that digital will use it as the basis for the next major release of Ultrix, our operating system. Not only will that release of Ultrix be based on OSF1, it will also comply with POSIX, XOPEN, and the System 5 interface definition. And of course, 
it will be, will be backward compatible with our current version of Ultrix. But there's another important reason that digital has decided to use OSF1. We want to demonstrate our support for OSF's open systems initiative. We are shipping OSF motif. We will incorporate the DCE and DME into Ultrix, and so we will make OSF1 the basis of our next major release. In fact, we have already shipped OSF1 with Ultrix commands and utilities to several academic institutions for their use. We plan to ship our merged Ultrix OSF release in the next calendar year. Digital is confident about OSF1, and we are committed to it. It's a commitment we share with vendors that represent 70% of the computer industry, including all the well-regarded vendors at this table. Digital is committed, and we are delivering. Today, we are announcing the availability from digital of an OSF1 developer's kit available for our DexStation 3100 systems that will give researchers and application developers access to OSF1 on digital's risk platforms. Because Ultrix applications will be binary or source code compatible, a developer can feel very comfortable continuing to work with Ultrix today in anticipation of the OSF1 release. But if they would like to investigate the OSF1 technologies today, they have the option to use the new developer's kit. This kit will ship during the first quarter of this next calendar year. OSF has been busy, and the results are here for all to see. Digital firmly supports OSF's open process. We support OSF as an accelerator of technology into the open market. OSF is working, and the benefits it offers are attracting more and more members from around the world. The promise of open computing is one every computer user hopes to realize. Digital is proud to be part of the organization that is making it happen. Thank you.